Hey guys, Zach Cherry here. If you're new to my channel, this is a place where we like to talk about all things horror movies. And with the announcement of Scream 5 now being in the early stages of development, we're going to be delving into a lot of topics related to the Scream franchise. If this is the first you're hearing about a Scream 5, you've probably been living under a rock for the past couple of weeks, but you can check out my video right over here and get yourself all caught up. If you have been keeping up with the news as it's been coming in, then you probably know there isn't a whole lot for us to digest just yet. Uh, and because of that, the internet is rampant with theories and speculations on what we might be expecting from this new movie. We don't know if this is going to be a continuation of the Sidney Prescott Woodsboro storyline or just an entirely new movie altogether, or whether or not Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette are actually coming back to reprise their roles. So yeah, anything could actually happen at this point. But the one thing that we know for absolute certain is that this is going to be the first film in this franchise where we'll be getting a brand new director as Wes Craven sadly passed away in 2015. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that this movie is going to be drastically different based on his absence alone. So with that being said, today we're going to be looking at my top five picks for modern day horror directors who should direct Scream 5. As always, meet me in the comment section below to give me your top picks. Give this video a thumbs up if you're interested in seeing more Scream related content and be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of my horror movie stuff. So coming in at number five is James Wan, who has risen to the top of his field in the last 15 years, having directed the first Saw movie, as well as Insidious, The Conjuring, and their respective sequels. Wan is also the founder of Atomic Monster Productions, which produces all of the other Conjuring Universe movies, and will also be taking on a television series reboot of I Know What You Did Last Summer. Now, I'm not a huge fan of The Conjuring, Conjuring Universe movies, and I've actually avoided most of them. I just personally don't find them to be scary, and they more so come off as redundant to me with their repetitive use of scare tactics, more specifically the jump scare. And James Wan is very guilty of this. If you watch any of his movies, you know that it is embedded in the DNA to the point where you can anticipate them every single time. However, the thing that James Wan specifically does get right with his jump scares is that he uses them within the context of the horror that we're meant to be afraid of. I think he could definitely make a terrifying Scream movie, and he's also a bigger name in horror, so if the possibility of directing two or three sequels was an option, he is definitely a name that you would want to see above the Scream title. At number four, we have Fede Alvarez. There are two reasons why Fede is on this list. The first one is Evil Dead, and the second is Don't Breathe. Now, in regards to making a case for Evil Dead, it is by far the best remake, reimagining, whatever you want to call it, of a classic horror movie of the 70s and 80s. Not only was it visually stunning and frightening, but it's also really funny. Also, a little tidbit of news about Fede Alvarez is that he's been tapped to produce the next Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, so he's already in pretty good standing in regards to resurrecting all of these fan favorite franchises. But where he truly flexes his directorial muscles is in the movie Don't Breathe. And if you've seen Don't Breathe, and you're also a huge fan of Wes Craven, you will have immediately noticed the similarities with that and the people under the stairs. I think that of all the directors I'm mentioning on this list, Alvarez is probably the most similar to classic Wes Craven. And I don't think that his work is directly imitating Wes Craven's, he just has a very simplistic and old school approach to filmmaking. And Don't Breathe is intense and scary and actually a, a much better movie than People Under the Stairs. So for these reasons, I think that Fede Alvarez could probably be the best option to give us a back to the basics approach to a Scream movie. And that might be exactly what Scream 5 needs to be. For number three, I'm gonna go with a dark horse contender and actually a female director, probably one of the best female directors working right now, Karen Kusama. Her horror credits include the segment Her Only Living Son in the horror anthology film 
XX, the much maligned Jennifer's body, and the invitation. Now, I haven't seen XX or double X, whatever you want to call it, so I can't speak of it. Jennifer's body, on the other hand, I feel is a movie that may have been ahead of its time, as it's actually developed quite a cult following over the years, and it certainly captures that nice blended tone of comedy and horror that the Scream movies are all about. But the real piece of evidence here to suggest that Kusama is a true mistress of suspense is the movie The Invitation. If you haven't seen it yourself, I urge you to watch it right after you finish this video. It's currently available on Netflix. This is a movie that gets under your skin and does such an amazing job giving you little scraps along the way, but withholding just enough that your expectations of timing will be so subverted that when all hell finally does break loose, you don't expect it because you've become so comfortable but in a way where you're also completely stressed out at the same time. This might not be a movie for everyone, but it definitely shows us what Kusama is capable of in the director's chair. And I feel like she could give us a very intense and unique entry in the Scream franchise. My runner up at number two is Mike Flanagan, who has slowly and methodically been building up quite a horror resume over the past decade. If you're not familiar, he's given us Oculus, Hush, Ouija, Origin of Evil, Evil, which was a vast improvement over the original. Gerald's Game, which I've yet to watch myself, but probably will be seeing it very soon. He's also the creator of the series The Haunting of Hill House, and most recently this month's sequel to The Shining, Doctor Sleep. Of all of my director picks on this list, Flanagan is probably the most visual filmmaker of the bunch. He treats his movies like they're paintings, with every shot being a new brush stroke, and it lends to this very surreal vibe. Now, that might not be what this franchise needs, as Scream has always been rooted more so in reality, and most of Flanagan's films include supernatural elements. But he also gave us Hush, which in a way is almost like the opening scene of the original Scream extended into a feature-length movie. He is definitely capable of delivering suspense, creating a sense of dread and claustrophobia, and he makes really pretty movies. I think in 20 years from now, Mike Flanagan is going to be the name that comes to people's minds when you talk about legendary horror directors. I don't know that he would be absolutely right for the Scream franchise, but he would 100% give us a fresh take on it, and that would be a movie I'd be very excited to see. And finally, my number one pick to direct Scream 5 is Jordan Peele. I think that at the heart of the Scream franchise, you have to remember that it's all about the meta appeal, and I think right now, Jordan is the one director who has his finger on the pulse of where this genre is going and where it's been. And this is attributed to the fact that he has such a great understanding of horror movies, and not just from one particular era, but horror movies from the beginning of major motion pictures. If we want to get a movie that feels as close in tone and style to the rest of the franchise, Jordan Peele is the absolute best choice to get us there. I don't even think you'd need Kevin Williamson's involvement if Peele was also attached as a writer, and that's no offense to Kevin Williamson, like he has banged out some amazing scripts for this series, but Peele's Academy Award and current resume are kind of hard to deny. He's already producing the Candyman reboot, and that's already one of my most anticipated horror movies coming out next year. Not to mention having Jordan Peele's name being above the title would probably be the closest thing to a household name we could get to helm this franchise and carry it forward for two or three more films after. And with him involved, these movies would be funny. They would be scary, but they would most definitely be funny and self-aware and unequivocally successful. And I have no doubt that he would make Scream relevant again. And my biggest trepidation with this franchise returning is that it could come back with nothing new to say. Jordan Peele would not let that happen. And for that reason alone, he is my number one pick to direct Scream 5. If you guys wanna watch more of my videos related to Scream, you can click over here on this playlist or you can watch whichever video of mine YouTube is recommending to you next. I have no idea what it might be, so I hope it's a good one. Thanks for watching guys. I've been Zach Cherry, and I'll be right back.